Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host, Jan. I hope you're all doing well. Okay, today's video is on Frank Lampard's Chelsea midfield. And boy, has he got a lot of players and formations to choose from. But before we do get into the video, I'd like to ask as per usual for you to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell notification icon if you enjoy my content and you've been watching my videos so you can keep it locked. So for me, Frank Lampard's biggest conundrum in his Chelsea journey, or certainly in the immediate sense, is gonna be his midfield. Um, what formation is he gonna use, but kind of more importantly, the personnel. There are a lot of midfielders at Chelsea, and a kind of a lot of high profile, or certainly well experienced midfielders at Chelsea that would wanna play, so who is he going to choose and what formation is he going to choose to accommodate those players? Because all the loanies have been recalled and they're all out on pre-season at the moment, I'm just going to reel off some names to let you know how many midfielders there are at the moment on pre-season. Danny Drinkwater, Jorginho, Kovacic, Van Hinkle, Kante, Barkley, Loftus-Cheek, Bakayoko, forgotten people like Lewis Baker and Casey Palmer. Billy Gilmore's also there with a few more youth knocking about as well. So yeah, as yeah, a lot. <laughs> so this is going to be really, really interesting. Frank Lampard's not like Maurizio Sarri. He hasn't got a sort of dogmatic rigid midfield which he plays one style and he's going to trust three individuals mainly. Lampard's going to be a bit different. Sure he'll have his favourites and eventually he'll find his preferred system and players and you know he'd probably still change a bit but he'll find his favourites. Frank will change formations and if he's changing formations he's going to need different players with different skill sets and attributes to suit said formations. But it's a difficult task because <laughs> Amongst everything, a lot of these players are going to be expecting to play, like they're worth a lot of money. You think of people like Bakayoko, Kovacic, Jorginho, you know, all these players cost a lot of money and they'll want to play one way or another, you know, if they're not going out on loan. So in this video today, I'm going to be talking about three different possible midfield formations and who could play in those midfields and maybe like, I don't know, just sort of play around a bit a little bit. Obviously earlier in the video I reeled off so many names, now I'm only going to choose a selection of names for this video, like in theory of what would work, because anything can happen. Frank's looking at everyone in pre-season, a lot of them are going to get a chance and who knows, Marco Van Hinkle could be a starter by the beginning of next season. I mean, you know, it might be unlikely, but for me and for the sake of this video, to keep it a little bit more easy, I'm going to select a few of the more recent household names, but expect Frank to have a look at everyone and there might be a couple of surprises that stay in the squad for next season or this season, whatever. Remember, as I go along in this video, comment down below your thoughts on certain midfield combinations, I say, or just tell me your midfield formation and personnel and explain why, why you think those players would work. Um, if not, just tell me what you think of the video or just basically get down in the comments. So like I said, in this video I'm going to be discussing three midfield formations that Lampard could use. First off, starting with the conventional midfield three, kind of basically what we've been using for the last season or year or so under Maurizio Sarri. The conventional mid three formation that became Vogue from Dutch football, total football, 60 odd years ago, suitable for a team who wants to play with the ball, force the issue and dominate games. And certainly a formation that is incredibly popular in modern football for big successful teams. Just look at any decent team in Europe. Odds are they're playing 4-3-3. Apart from anything else, it would make sense to deploy this midfield formation for Frank, purely because this is what Chelsea have been playing under Sarri and they're drilled in it. But Frank's midfield three will be a bit different to Sarri's. There'll be loads of similarities in terms of pressing and maybe in terms of occupying certain spaces, but there are differences and nuances. And the main one being no register. Yep, so there won't be that anchored pivot where all play goes through, like Jorginho racking up a million passes. So that might put him under threat off the bat. So how's it gonna work? 
The first big question would be, can Kante play in that? Now, I've spoken loads of times how Kante could not have played Jorginho's role last season in terms of having all that play go through him and also being anchored, which wastes Kante. And Golo Kante needs to roam and destroy and intercept. So if he's to sit in that midfield three, he needs license. He can still defend and intercept there, but he can't be anchored as a register. I discussed this with Nini from Blue Lines TV on the latest episode of my podcast, Yannick on Chelsea. And he suggested the idea of this midfield free being deployed with Kante at the base, with Mason Mount on the right and Ruben Loftus-Cheek on the left. Now that sounds bloody wicked, but for me it, it might have to come a bit later and it would have to be mobility in that midfield free, in my opinion. We also discussed how at the beginning of the season he would keep Jorginho there, just not to shake too many things up at the beginning and maybe play keep Kante on the right and maybe bring Mason Mount in on the left centre mid instead of Ruben Loftus-Cheek, well, and Kovacic because he loves Mount and um, basically gives him the opportunity to have that attacking threat in midfield. Quick plug on Mason Mount, I did a video on Mason Mount for my patrons on my Patreon page, uh, it's an exclusive thing, if you want to watch it, check out my Patreon, you have to pay $1 a month and you can watch that video. Anyway, alternatively, Frank Lampard does drop Jorginho completely, which he probably won't like, um, and play Kante in that deep role, play Mateo Kovacic on the right, and play Mason Mount on the left. Now for me, that's a really interesting midfield three, provided it's a fluent front front free, midfield free. If they can interchange, we know Kante can move up the pitch and he has attacking prowess now. He's been trained under Sari to have more of an offensive part of his game, which the numbers dictate. Kovacic can obviously roam and Mount is a very attacking midfielder, but he's shown by making two tackles and interceptions per game that he can play well defensively, dropping deep as well. So a midfield free of Mount, Kante and Kovacic moving around and, you know, filling in when the other one goes forward could work and sounds really interesting. Next up, the deep midfield two. So this would be in the formation of 4-2-3-1. Now this formation has a sort of engine room deep midfield two um, and then the you know, in the three in front, there'll be a number 10 if you want to talk about that third midfielder. The number 10 is pretty easy. It would be Mason Mount who would excel there. Ruben off to cheek potentially if fit. And, you know, other than that, maybe Marco Van Hinkle or even a Pulisic or someone like that. Just an attacking midfielder that could interchange that would all be astute playing there. But in terms of the midfield deep two, one of them has to be N'Golo Kante. He's very, very good in playing in a two. I mean, it's always come in a 4 4 2 or. Uh, three, four, three. so in a mid four, but I don't think it really matters. I believe he can play in that deep midfield too, and he'll have a partner. So, Maurizio Sarri said Jorginho cannot play in a 4-2-3-1 in that deep midfield too, but I don't believe Sarri. <laughs> I don't think he's right, because Jorginho's already proven his, how versatile he can be as a player by playing in different positions for Italy. I believe he absolutely could play in the base of a 4-2-3-1 in a two-man pivot and that would suit Kante very much. So that would seem like a really good deep midfield to Kante and Jorginho. Jorginho had, did get a lot better defensively at the end of last season as well so it could be defensively sound but if you want Kante's partner to be a better ball carrier to step forward into midfield rather than quick passing, a deep two of Kante and Mateo Kovacic could be bloody awesome. If you think about it, Kovacic is a really good ball progressor and dribbler. Kante could win it back, combine with Kovacic, and Kovacic could dribble forward and, you know, break a couple of lines or just get the ball up pitch. That, for me, would be really, really good. Oh, God forbid, you know, a left field shout, maybe back a Yoko if he could revive his um, Milan form. That was good. Him and Together with Angola. I'm not going to do the back of Yoko Chan. Point being, who knows, anything can happen in pre-season. Or even uh, Frank might want to get the Premier League winning band back together and put drink water in there. They won the Premier League before doing it. But for me, drink water probably isn't good enough. But, you know, stranger things have happened in football. So I like the idea of a deep midfield too, being Kante and Jorginho or Kante and Kovacic. So that leaves me with the third midfield formation and an exciting one, the midfield diamond. Now, this is a really exciting idea because it accommodates so many good midfielders. So think about it. Two up top, it doesn't have to be two strikers. It could be like a Tammy Abraham um, with say, a Christian Pulisic or Callum Hudson-Odoi playing just off them as the support striker. 
and then the diamond in behind would go like this. Mason Mount in the 10 plays really well there. Ruben Loftus-Cheek left centre mid where he absolutely excelled last season and could just rip it up more in that position. Right centre mid and Golo Kante played very very good there last season, it had a good offensive contribution and in this diamond he might have more of a licence to roam defensively and make interceptions. And then you can keep Jorginho at the base of the midfield diamond doing what he does best. Now and you know you could interchange that with Kovacic or someone or you know well another attacking midfielder but for me that sounds like an amazing midfield that diamond it accommodates our best midfielders in my opinion and <laughs> just, there's a bit of that sort of FIFA mentality where like all our great players get to play in this midfield in their favoured positions but there are negatives to this midfield diamond Firstly, wide forwards lose out. Like, I tried to add Pulisic or hudson Adoy as the support striker playing off them, going a bit wide, to basically accommodate wingers, because we got four wingers. Um, two of them would be, you know, annoyed not to be playing and being benched anyway. If you turn that into three, or even four if you play two actual strikers, you've got a problem. So the wingers suffer, but if it is a striker with a wide forward like Pulisic or Callum, maybe it could work. And besides that, the, uh, a 4 4 2 diamond, it can be a really effective counter formation to something maybe that the opposition's doing and it's messing you up. It's very much a spanner in the works that can, like, you know, shake things down. Not necessarily a good default formation for Frank Lampard's Chelsea. So if it's something he switches to, it could be really exciting, but I'm not sure how realistic it is to think maybe he's going to start with that. But like I said, it's that sort of fun FIFA mentality of trying to get all your great players in, in the good positions where they could play. Anyway, that's enough of formations for the minute. So guys, let me know what you think. What are your formations? What are your midfield? Which players are you gonna put in there? Get in the comment section and let me know. Please like the video if you've enjoyed this. Um, thank you um, for everyone who subscribed and engaged in my videos. Um, just a quick reminder, if you want the exclusive video on Mason Mount, if you want to watch that, you can donate $1 to my Patreon and become a patron and once a month I'll do an exclusive video. I'll put the link down to that in the description. Don't know what else to say, guys. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Enjoy the football and I'll see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living. I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines, I rap through thought. Body bag the verse, outline the chalk. In my life, seen trouble. Hustle on the double. Silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle. Yo, chick like to guzzle. Bad boy, stay in trouble. I only love this paper. Sorry, I don't. I love me, baby.